Hey, Mike here. I'm uh, going to winterize and change the oil on my two Kawasaki STX 15Fs in this video. Never done it before. I just bought these used, so we'll just uh, see what it takes. Well, as you can see, these thirty dollar thirty nine ninety nine eBay covers are not waterproof as advertised. All four of these footwells have water in them. I think to get this off, we gotta pull this, pull this, and this pops off. Okay, just like so. And to remove this seat, I believe you pull this little black handle out. Yeah, there you go. Lay this to the side. All right, let's check the oil on this thing. I run it from Bagnell Dam to Truman Dam. And it looks like it's a, I don't know if you can see that, a little bit low there. So anyway, this thing burns oil and so does that one. So I don't know if that's normal or what, but it seems like about every, seems like about every tank full I'm adding a half a quart of oil to them. All right, well, I can't find a uh, drain plug on this thing. So I'm gonna have to suck it out using a pump. Um, and just to make sure the battery holds up, the battery's down in here. As you can see, there's the back of the ski. There's the battery right there. So I'll hook a charger up to it here and make sure it's good before I start the pump up. Well, let's break out the pump. This is a 12 volt fluid pump. All right. Check, okay. the bottom Let's see here. okay I think I got the pump hooked up correctly I just got my 12 volt pump hooked up to my battery let's see if it'll suck this oil out of here there it comes All right, well, in case you guys wondered how I pumped the oil out, this is an air line for airbags. I hooked it up to this pump. It's a fluid pump, a little 12 volt, 60 watt, five amp direction of flows on here. Anyway, so I stuck this down in the uh, dipstick tube and the other end I put down in a five gallon bucket and then use these and my advice here is to only use the shortest amount of tubing possible to go down in the dipstick because the more tubing you have the harder it is for this pump to work I had this real long piece of tubing and it was taking forever to pump it out and then I shortened the tubing down and it pumped the whole thing out in like five minutes so anyway that's my tip on that this is a little eBay pump I think I paid like nine dollars for it I sucked as much oil as I could out of there. Um, I'm looking for the oil filter on this thing. And it's the front of the engine, the back of the engine. It's like, you see the dipstick tube here. It's like you reach down in here and you can feel it. It's sort of like way down in there. Let me see if this will fit. See if I can get it off. Yay, that's the right one even. 
Alright, so let's get this on. Let me see here, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Alright, let's see if we can't get that thing out of there. I think the extension is too much. I think we just need a socket with that. Before I take that out okay so before I take that filter unscrew it any further I'm gonna put this diaper underneath it try to catch some oil Kind of tough to get that underneath there. Did the best I could, I think. Ugh. Okay, it's out. This is the filter that was in there. Yeah. Let me see if I can see that was the filter that was in there. Kawasaki 16097-007-16097-007. And here's the filter that I'm putting in there. That is a camera K and N two oh four K N two oh four see if I can get that to spin. The good thing about this is you can tighten it on with the socket. In case you're wondering is K N N two oh four the socket that fits it it's a seventeen millimeter See if I can't get this new one down in here. Find, find the hole. It's all about feel. Where's the nipple? Where's the nipple? On. Let's righty tidy. I'm just going to use a wrench. Okay. Don't use a deep well socket to tighten up the can in. It's too tall. So, let me see here, righty tighty. It's backwards, so I'm facing the wrong way. I'm just gonna snug her down. Five quarts came out, so. I'm gonna start out with four and check it.
doyle on this thing. Alright, so that is four and a about four and a half quarts right there, so that looks pretty good. I'm gonna put another half quart in the red one. Quartz did for me. It's not bad. It's, it still needs a little. I'm gonna put another half quart in and call it good. Alright, folks, here's the filter that came out of this uh, STX 15F. It's a 2008. It's a Kawasaki 16097-007. And I'm replacing it with this, as the website says is the correct one, which is KN-204. And like I said, this is a 17 millimeter. It's kind of got an O-ring gasket. People like comparing filters, so there you go. There's the comparison. Um, the Kawasaki is looks like it's got more, you know, like height to it. Looks like it's got like the same amount of holes in it. I don't know what that means, but anyway, made in Thailand, made in China. I think next time I'm going to go back with the Kawasaki instead of this one, just because this one, you know, it's a K&N, but it's made in Thailand. I don't know. It just don't seem as good as this Kawasaki one. This is my opinion. I don't know if that's true or not. Anyway, you can see the media down inside this is kind of glued in. I don't want to cut it apart, but anyway, that's it. That's my two cents on that. Well, I noticed when I was taking the cap off that uh, this this cap has got a little O-ring on it. So anyway, I was wondering why it was so difficult to get the cap off. Anyway, clear this up. And then we'll try to winterize this thing by pumping some antifreeze through the engine. I bet you that's going to smoke like a banshee. When I mean banshee, I mean a two stroke four wheeler. Uh, we'll go ahead and make sure that that's foil filter's tight before I start this thing up. You know, there were some people saying that you had to go through the compartment to get there, but you can reach your hand down in here and get that filter out and just have to bend it around. But anyway. All right. So here's the front end of the jet ski. So my goal is to run water through this and let it run until it, you know, warms up or whatever. I don't know if there's a thermostat in these or not, but I don't think there is. But Anyway, I let it run for a few minutes, let it pump some water, and uh, then run some antifreeze through it, winterize it. So, anyway, under this front cover here, here is the plug for the garden hose. Oh man, it's on tight. Well, I'm gonna have to get some pliers for that. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. <sighs> started it yeah there we go all right well I'll have to rig up some sort of deal where I can pump antifreeze and water through it let's see what I can come up with so what I'm gonna use to pump the antifreeze is this pump I bought this off uh, a guy he had like a dozen of them and he used them for a week or two and then moved so anyway it's a one-third horsepower three amp ever built pump part number one six one seven two zero oh wait no that's the serial number 
the model number is UT03301, UT03301. I think this is a Home Depot deal. Anyway, so we'll use this and pump, pump the antifreeze in. Okay, so I need a short hose to go from my pump to my thing, so I just picked up these washing machine hoses. The thing is, they're female on both ends, so I'm going to have to get a male-to-male -male adapter there. I picked one of those up at Menards. It's a uh, three-quarter MHT, three-quarter MHT garden hose adapter. Anyway, male-to-male -male deal, so I'll screw that in there. Okay, so I got my male to male adapter on there, and to go from water to antifreeze while it's still running, I'll put one end of it on the splitter here, and that way I can turn the water on, turn the water off, turn the antifreeze on, turn the antifreeze off. That's my technique here. All right, so this is what I got going on here. I got this Y here and I can shut one side off or another. I got the red going to the pump here and I got the output going to here. So after my engine's running in a few minutes I'll just switch off the cold water and turn on the antifreeze. Alright, a bit of advice, something that I did that maybe you can avoid I hooked the water up to this thing and it was running, you know, the water was running, but the ski was not running. The ski wasn't turned on. It was just pumping water through there. Well, it was running for like five minutes before I tried to start it. And then when I tried to start it, it acted like it was locked up, you know, like the engine was seized. And I checked the oil and there's no water in the oil, but there was water in the cylinders. I guess just the pressure pushed it up in the cylinder. So I had to take the spark plugs out and cycle the starter and blow all the water out of it and uh, anyway don't do what I did don't start the ski or don't run the water unless the ski started so that's what I'm going to do now back to my project okay I'll hand hold this but for people who don't know how to turn these things on it's got this key like this there's little magnets in here that are in different positions for depending on the ski and underneath this lid you put the key in the slot there hard to do one-handed but anyway turn it to the right then it's on you'll hear a beep and then to actually get it to run you have to you have to put a little key thing like this up underneath the stop button and then that way and then you tie this to your wrist, so anyway, if you fly off, you uh, kill the engine. Live and learn. So anyway, it was a failure. This part is a failure right here, because when I turned that high-pressure garden hose water off, it was still plenty going to the jet ski, so it wasn't getting pure antifreeze through it, so I'm going to pump some pure antifreeze through it all right so here's my final on this one I got the pump in there with the antifreeze and I got it run into here so I'm gonna turn on the pump I'm gonna turn on the bike turn on the pump and then unplug the pump really fast Let's see if I can set you guys up here and you can watch what I do I know it's kind of noisy because I started it, but anyway, fresh water going in there. There's water coming out the side. Okay, I'll let that warm up a few minutes and then I'll uh, switch it over to antifreeze.
don't do what I do and use one of those because that thing sucks right there. Those little valves can't hold back with the water pressure, you know, at 60 psi.